So I'm working on one of these RDB with yellow burners. These are a great burner, fantastic burner. This one, unfortunately, is giving trouble. Most of them don't. Um, I've got a bit of a flame for less than a second, and then it goes out. The blower comes on, the solenoid seems to be activating. There's loads of stuff right with it, but I suspect the pump. I'll show you why in a second. Here we go. Okay, so if you can see to my left and your right, I have a dog food tin with a bulkhead connector, or tank fitting, tank connector as we call them, half inch gate valve, and into the oil line. So I've just made a temporary oil supply. You know, this is nothing special. Dog food tins are plentiful in my house because I'm a big dog. So anyway, look, I'm just filling this as a reservoir for the kerosene to work this out. Okay, so I've put half a litre in, maybe, or a bit more maybe, maybe a better point. So we're up to about here in the dog food tin. Okay, that in turn comes down into the burner. The connection on the burner is here, so you know I just want to make sure that that's tight, which it is. It's a temporary connection, and I'm just going to make sure everything else is tight. Okay. All right. So just to show you the setup on these burners, this thing is the pump. This is the solenoid. You know, it's got a thumb screw on it that you can take off fairly handy. And on these units, there's a little grub screw at the back, or a little screw at the back with an Allen key head in it on an extension piece and the idea of this thing is to bleed them so if you've got you know if you've just had a fill of oil and you can't get the thing going the first thing to do is to check that you've got a flow of oil out of this thing now we need the oil in my reservoir which is a dog food tin to be higher than the outlet so i'm just going to put that in there and bring this down so now my oil is higher than here we're going to open this then and see if we can get a flow of oil out of this and open the valve so again, this is simulating what you'd have at home, but I'm only using it as a temporary connection, so I can see if I can get this thing going. Right, so, I've the oil. Now, you can, you can see the oil flowing out of that now. I've tilted this down so you can see it. We've got some air, we've got good flow of oil there, all the air is out, and I'm gonna lock this screw up then. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't cross thread it. Okay, I'm just finger tight. It's just it's a bit slippy because we've oil on it. Okay, that's it. So now we know we've oil out of this thing. It's primed, it's ready to go. Or not go. I'm just going to wipe up the excess oil off the table because I'm going to try and make a flame and I don't want that going up. Okay. So, power on. This particular unit is 230 volts. Um, you know, different voltage. Europe, I think, is mostly 230, 240. So here we go. Power on. Let's see if we can get some sort of a flame out of it. We know it's got oil. So if it's going to do something, we should see something. Maybe, well, you can see the spark there. That's not even pumping at all. Okay, I'll just make sure it's primed again. So we'll just bring that down. See it on this other camera. I'm just going to crack this open and make sure all the air is out. Okay, I've got a good drip of oil out of that. Definitely all the air is out. Okay, I'm just closing this now. And I have more oil on the table. Kerosene. Okay, so we'll give it another shot. Again, I'll just clean up the oil. Now, I'm going to pull the pump out of this thing. I really do suspect the pump. So here we go. We'll try it again. see the spark and we should get ignition then, but if it's not working, you won't. No. Okay, so it went to lock out itself. No. Okay, so we're getting no spray pattern out of this unit. What I can do is I can take this, this out. This is our vent. You know, like our bleed screw. Take that out. And I can put a gauge in here. Okay, and we can see, uh, what I'm looking for is for this pump to generate 8 bar of pressure. And when I bring it on, if it's working, we should see 8 bar of pressure. I should be able to adjust 8, 10, 12, whatever I want. 8 for kerosene anyway, and 11 or thereabouts for diesel.
No, it pulsed one or two. It should be constant, no messing around, but it just should just pump. Uh, the motor sounds healthy because the motor turns a fan as well. If that was really pitiful, you'd hear that as well. It sounds sounds okay on that end. And the other end of the drive, so both sides of the motor, one side turns the fan, the other side turns the pump. If the fan's going fast, it means the motor's okay. Uh, the pump in this case, um, yeah, dodgy. So okay, got to change it now. Under here, there's one 4mm screw. I think the 4mm anyway. This is a solenoid. It's an upside down view. The pump is upside down at the moment, but I'm just going to undo this. Right? That's a stepped thumb screw, if you like, for the pump, or for the solenoid. So solenoid just slides out of that. There we go. Solenoid is out, and it uses this metal for magnetism. I suppose it makes a magnet out of that. Okay, so that's that. And there's a screw one under that. So, I don't need the screws out, I just need them loose enough. Well, there's one in here. Okay, so just over the capacitor, there's another one. And it just slides out. Now, I have it moving, so I want to disconnect the high pressure oil line, which is this fella here. Okay, standard right hand thread, so we're just going anti clockwise to undo it. It's a you know small bore copper pipe. That's a 12 mil spanner. Okay, so now there we go, pump is out. Now, although this pump looks perfect, you know, turns and everything, nice and smooth, it's not pumping. So, it's a nice paperweight. Now, these pumps, if you can see this, these pumps have a flat spot on the shaft. And this little plastic drive coupling sits over that, but it only goes on when it's, you know, when it's sitting on the flat spot. It won't go on otherwise. So, that has to go on the new pump and it has to sit into a rebate on the actual drive shaft. So there's two connections to make. One is, you know, the flat spot is right. And the other one is that the little kind of shoulders on this uh, coupling connect where they're supposed to connect in on the drive shaft. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. In here is the drive shaft. It's got like, you know, it's got a slot, two slots in it. And that drive shaft coupling sits into them. Okay, so, now, I have a replacement pump here. So we're gonna take our drive shaft coupling, put on our little pump, show this again. Maybe you can see the flat spot, I don't know. And the drive shaft coupling won't engage, won't go on until it's sitting over that. Here's my pump with the drive shaft coupling on. I'm setting the drive shaft coupling at 12 o'clock relative to the angle it needs to be at when it goes in. And I've done, done the same with the shaft inside. I've set that. You can move that around with your fingers. Now look, did you see it slide in? If it's not right, it won't go in. Don't force it, right? Nice and gentle. And that's it, we're in. So we've got the drive shaft coupling set for 12 o'clock. Set your shaft with your finger. Look, it can turn easy. Set your shaft for 12 o'clock. Then offer it up. Nice and easy. There we go. No big push, just nice and gentle putting it in. Now we've got to put our solenoid on. I'll do that in a minute. In the meat, before I do that, I want to finger tight the screws that hold the pump in. Right, so. You want a long Allen key for this. Hopefully you can see something there. This third one, you can take this off if you want, but I find I can get through the grill and then into the into the third screw, which is in around where the solenoid is. Okay. I want to get it out now. It won't come out. Okay, so that's it. This one we just go a little bit tighter with it. And 
the third one. Same again. Okay, so that's three screws in. Now to put the solenoid in, if you can see this, solenoid gets this metal piece. This metal piece is what you know makes it a magnet. So that slides over here, opposite side of the wires. Wires are here, and the solenoid or the, the metal part goes up that way. Then this all of this goes over that brass shaft and then down. And that's it. Right, it gets its screw, the thumb screw for the top of it. And it just goes on hand tight. Okay, so now we've got the pump fitted and we have um, our thumb screw tightened. Okay, so we're going to hook up the high pressure feed, which is this line here. Make sure you haven't picked up any dirt, which it hasn't. And now you've got to be very careful when tightening these. You don't want to go mental on them because they're fine threads and um, and it would be very easy to cross thread it. So it needs to go up by hand. Which is what it's doing here. I'm just going to tighten it with the spanner the rest of the way because my, my gloves are slippy. Okay, so this is the oil and again this would this is upside down but hopefully you can see it going on. Okay, so when you get kerosene on these gloves, they get a bit slippy and it's very hard to kind of move stuff. But look, this goes in, you know, it, it's holding there at that and I'm just going to go about an eighth of a turn. And that's it. Okay, so that's our oil line connected. Oil line, high pressure outlet, that goes to the nozzle. Now, so there's the photocell on this thing. It's spotless. When these give trouble and start sutting up and the pressures are wrong, it's got dirty oil or the nozzle is gone or whatever, um, these are generally one of the first things to get blackened up and you can kind of tell some of the condition of the unit. So look, just so as you can see, it just comes out on a long stalk like that and it's just a friction fit, it just pushes in, there's no right way and wrong way for it. That's it, I just pushed it in and you just pull it out tight, careful not to pull on the wire part of it. Now this is the old pump, this is the one that's not working, but to, to increase or decrease the pressure, if you can see that screw there, as I wind that in, it increases the pressure and as I wind it out, it decreases the pressure. You're going to need some sort of a gauge for this. So we've changed the pump on this unit, we have another pump in there and I'm going to put a pressure test on this now. I want to set this for 8 bar. Okay, so I'm going to take out the bleed screw, make sure my oil is off, which it is. So taking out the bleed screw. Okay, that's it out. There's a rubber O-ring goes on the end of this. So the fact that it didn't come out with the bleed screw means that it's still in there. That's okay for what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to put my oil gauge in here, my pressure gauge. So we're looking for... Um, 8 bar on kerosene. So I'm winding that in. Okay, not going mental on it, now just, just enough. Okay, so hopefully you can see that gauge now. I'll hold the gauge up in a second. So my feed line is purged. I can do it on this unit, I can do it from here. So it's purged, we've no air in the line. The unit can suck um, kerosene but it can't suck air, so it needs to be primed first. So there we go, We're, we've got power on now. There we go. Let's see if we can get some flame. Now, I didn't get a chance to check the pressure on that. You could see the flame, but the flame is going in towards my bench. Obviously I don't want to set the bench on fire. It's just for testing so you can see the setup. So we have it producing flame, no problem. Now I want to produce that flame at 8 bar of pressure. So what I want to do is adjust the, the pressure. Now on the old pump, so the old pump is like that. There's our bleed screw and there's a slot in this, this one here below it. Maybe you can see that better. There's a slot here and we turn that in or out. Okay, clockwise for pressure, anti-clockwise for less pressure. 
So I'm going to hit the button and we'll see what we get up to when it's working. And I'll point the flame away from everything I want to keep. So this is upside down. We want to be going to just below there. There's eight bar there where the screwdriver is. So sorry it's not the right way up for you, but Okay, so there you go, that's the end of this. Uh, I've changed out this pump, very easy to do, maybe a 10 minute job, handy enough to do, you just need a few tools, uh, a 12 spanner, 15 spanner, and a four mil Allen key. And with that, you can kind of fairly take it asunder. Um, and I'm gonna leave it there at that. So if you liked the video, please thumbs up, subscribe down here, and thanks very much for dropping by, and I'll see you all in the next video. Good luck.